What do you need to make a radio shack with a small handheld radio? Well, you need an audio cable to connect the audio of the transceiver to the computer and back, and you need a more efficient antenna. For the audio cable, I used this uh, drawing which is compatible with my Baofeng uh, transceiver and if you have another brand you should check the proper connections. Turning to my recycle bin of rescued cables, I found this uh, recovered audio cable from a uh, broken computer headset. The audio jacks where we used to connect the transceiver's headset now are used to take the audio to the computer. For the antenna I am using a ground plane design which is very simple to use and this has good results. I am using this antenna calculator to calculate the length of the radiator and the counter weights. Then making a visit to the local hardware store I found this copper pipe 6 mm in diameter used for air conditioning. The whole antenna is simple to use because it is built around this PL239 female connector. This ground plane antenna is much more efficient than the original little stick because of the radiation pattern. The little stick's radiation pattern is much more like a globe in the open space and close to the ground perhaps much like a mushroom. The GP's radiation pattern on the other hand it's much flat it doesn't radiate upwards and it concentrates the power much more on the horizontal and that's the ideal case in the infinity of, of the universe but if we take it close to the mother earth perhaps the ideal pattern might look like this and in reality perhaps it looks like this, but anyway much better than the mushroom of the little stick.
just when I was about to finish this beautiful video, I got my rig expert antenna analyzer and I got to analyze this antenna and the results just blew even myself. It was fantastic. The numbers speak for themselves, close to 1 SWR and uh, the impedance very close to 50 ohms. Now that the cable was done, I was trying to use a uh, mobile app called APRS Droid, which communicates uh, digitally on APRS frequency of the handheld transceiver. There are some settings that should be done with the transceiver, like a vox activation, which is a voice activated transmission because we are not capable to press the PTT when working with a computer or a telephone. I put the SQL setting to 1 which is the threshold at which the reception opens and you might hear something. In order for APRS Druid to work, you must uh, make some settings And there you have your first APRS transmission. You can see the transceiver entering transmission mode because of the Vox. And right before you know it, your position is picked up on this uh, fancy map. The next thing to do was to put the whole construction in my car and head for the road. And this is my entire journey as it was tracked by other enthusiasts APRS receivers. I am connecting the antenna cable to the transceiver with the help of an adapter. The radio shack that I installed outside is because it was summer and it was sunny, but your radio shack can be installed inside the house in a balcony or near the window in the bedroom where you can put the antenna outside the window and just route the coaxial cable inside the house. The first thing you can do is to run digital mode software with your handheld radio and see what digital transmission is out there. The IPRS transmissions are in fact packed at uh, 1200 uh, baud. For the things to work out nice you have to do some sound settings at your computer side. The line in and volume settings should be around 50% and the audio knob on the radio to about one quarter to half. The APRS system in Europe is pretty developed and it uses a standard frequency of 144.8 MHz. The next thing you can do is transmit SSTV, which stands from Slow Scan Television.
There are also mobile apps for SSTV, one for transmission and one for reception. We can't finish our job so far with done without an SDR receiver. This one does not allow you to transmit, but it will help you receive some very interesting signals which are not uh, available with your transceiver. And these are AM signals on the aviation band and uh, the cherry on the cake, the NOAA Earth images. This antenna is not particularly good for satellites, but it is a start and with patience you can get pretty good results. No matter how big or small your radio shack is, one simple but hugely important thing you can do is to get your license. Not only it will allow you to transmit in the amateur bands, but also to exchange QSL cards, win prizes and diplomas. Go study, go to exam and you will pass. It is meant to draw people into the hobby, not to scare them away. Make yourself proud to hear your call sign in the air. Thank you.